So hello and welcome to this new um, video series where we're going to look at the programming software platform for Codices. Um, so Codices is an excellent and uh, very capable software package um, where we can use that this program Codices um, PLC Sims. Uh, Festo has become a great user in this and they're very popular in Germany. Um, and we're going to use it in relation with our with our Festo uh, CC E L K um, PLCs. Now, when we're downloading the software, um, we can download it through the, the Festo support catalog. Um, you see, if you Google Codices um, Pack Ten SP Ten uh, Patch Four, you'll see the date beside it. That's the newest one um, that they have available. So you can download that um, and install it into your system. What we also need to do is we do need the particular um, PLC uh, target support package. So it's very important to download this one here. You'll see there's um, a couple of older versions of it as well. Um, the most recent version I'm using is the 159. Um, you'll see the date there, the 2016 one. Another package that's very useful to download from Festo is their Festo Field Device Tool, which ultimately allows us to um, network our devices um, not just PLCs, but servo motors, um, other types of peripheral devices as well. We can um, put IP addresses in and network them up. So make sure you have all that downloaded. Um, so you'll see the icon looks a little like this. There's the Festo Field Device tool. We'll talk about that in later videos. Um, so if I open up Codices, um, it will open up uh, the main software platform. Uh, I believe Codices was it's a open source um, PLC program software, which is great. So there's no licensing requirements with it. Uh, I believe it was set up by a number of programmers um, from, you know, that kind of maybe come from a Siemens background, Alan Bradley, all different kind of uh, programming backgrounds, and they work together to set up this platform. Uh, so you'll see actually when you're using it, it kind of has a mix of everything in it, but it is very similar to uh, Siemens TIA portal, um, but maybe it's a little bit better for beginners because it's not as noisy. There's not just as many things going on the screen. So it can be a little bit easier to manage. It is a little bit easier to set up um, and it's got an excellent uh, simulation and visualization uh, part to it. So uh, that's I think where a lot of the real benefits come from. Um, you can do excellent visualization and kind of simulation with it too. And we'll look at this as we go along, but super programming, um, just as capable as any other programming software. Um, so it just takes a minute to kind of open up. When it does open up, um, it gives you the kind of home screen. Uh, it also links it to the Festo website because this is the kind of platform I downloaded it from. If you got it from maybe a different supplier, they would have their home page in there or even just the Codices home page itself. And you can see we can go new project um, or open project from a PLC and you can look at your recent projects there. Now if I click in a new project, um, for the PLC that we're working with, we want to have a template already set up for ourselves. Um, and that is the PLC that we're looking for. You can set it up from, from scratch, you can set up HMIs, um, but obviously it's very easy if we can have it all set up for ourselves. Um, and Festo have done that kind of groundwork for us. So in order to have that template there, Remember I said you needed the, the package support. Um, where is it? You needed that uh, target package support downloaded. There it is there. So make sure that's downloaded and saved somewhere on your computer. And how to install that. If you go to Tools, Package Manager, what it'll allow you to do is install different packages for different PLCs, HMIs, whatever it is, and onto the system. So all you're going to do is install um, and then you're going to look ultimately where for the path folder that you've um, located or saved that file on and um, open it up and just go through a typical install. It doesn't take too long and then you should see it there completed and fully installed. And then when you go to do a new project, if you've installed it correctly, it will be available there for you. And we can double click on it and open it up. Um, I didn't type in a name our save location for the package so you know if you need to do that go ahead and do that and um, I just kind of open up the first one 
obviously if you're, you're doing that you would um, again the PLC we're using there's different types of CECC link um, PLC so the one we're using is the LK one and again it gives you the options what language you want to code in um, I'm just going to go ahead with ladder diagram <coughs> So when we open that up, you'll see on the left hand side in our kind of project tree, we've got um, the usual type of things we'd like to see. There's our device there that we're using. Um, we have our main program file in here. There it is there, it's also linked here. Um, we can build libraries. Uh, that's just the application to kind of generate the code to download into our PLC. And then we've got our digital inputs and digital outputs. Um, with this, you will see um, we have, I believe it's 14 or 15 digital inputs. Actually, sure, look, I'll click in um, and check. Uh, if we look at our digital inputs and digital outputs, you see we have two bytes, and uh, we've eight in the first byte, and then we have six in the other one. So we have 14 inputs that we can use. And um, you'll see their address is percentage I for input, and then X 0, .0. Uh, the first zero is for the first input module and then uh, ultimately input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have our second input module, which is one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And we always have X beside it. Um, and then I for input, Q for output, M for memory bit. And you see on digital outputs. And again, if we open it up, we have just eight outputs. Okay. Into our PLC program, it's kind of the main task. You'll see we've got our ladder logic here, and we can start coding away. So we can use our normally open contacts and connect that into then the coil there. And we will, again, we'll go through it in later videos, but you have different sort of symbolisms that you can use for your ladder logic. Um, you know, whatever you need your timers, your counters, etc. Thing I just want to finish with in this video is just how we can call or set ultimately our IO uh, label or variables. It gives us a very handy uh, kind of pop up here. So let's just say I wanted to put in a start button. If I press enter, it'll open up a kind of auto declare. Uh, so I give it a start, call it a boolean. I can initialize the value to false. So it starts false. The address, then I can give it a tag. So percentage I for input X 0, 0.0. And you can put in a comment as well with it. And we can say what type of variable is it? Is a variable, variable input, etc. And we'll have a look at the different ones of these in different videos. Go ahead and just give it a general variable. And then it pops up up here. So you can do that kind of auto pop up, auto declare if you want. Or you could copy and paste this comment down and you can declare them up here in kind of a statement list type approach. Um, so you can just go ahead and copy that. You know, if I copy that down, let's just say I could have a start, then I could have a stop button, and let's just say we have an e stop button, and then ultimately just nicely increase my, um, my addresses because I'm never gonna have um, ones with the same address and then you know maybe you could start turning them off as normally closed uh, start them off in a, in a true state depending on what way you're wiring them in or maybe you would just put them in as a normally closed contact so you know your flexibility there uh, and then even for your outputs let's just say we have an LED and remember it's going to be a Q so we need to declare that there a Q and then we can start from the start and then down here if I simply type in one that's already declared it will allow it to go in the won't bother giving us that pop-up so that's basically how you set up a project um, using a festo ce cc lk and um, plc where the code is the same then it gives you a look at the interface um, and that gets us ultimately set up so in other videos we'll, we'll progress onwards with that